please welcome now to the show, Libby Gore. Do I come through? Thank you so much for coming on the show. That was an abrupt ending. Yeah, it um, was meant to be a smooth fade out. I apologise. This is my um, professional musical house band, Spod, from Hi. Sydney. Hello, this is Spod. From Sydney. I'm not good He's at this not, kind of thing. They don't have technology I in understand. Sydney. Um, thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule to come to visit here at the illustrious Channel 31 studios. I'm very lucky that it's you, Rose. Yes. I feel very honoured. Oh, thank you. That's such a nice thing to say. So Elmick Feast, I mean, I was like live and sweaty. I used mm. to watch that when I was, I think I wasn't allowed to watch that. Mm. I'd like kind of sneak out. It's a very confronting show. Yeah. Well, how did you get started in comedy? You're, wait, so you are one of these lawyer comedian types. Yeah. Why is that? A, why do so many lawyers become comedians? I just have to, I sort of move myself around a bit. There you go. Is that what is that, does that, that look better? That looks good. That looks nice. Work, work, yeah. work yourself out. And why do so oh, many yeah. lawyers become... Well, that's so that you know how far you can go, I think. Mm. And also because when we went through law school, I know this might sound really weird, but you didn't have to pay. Oh. So a lot of smart kids got to get educated beyond their... Class structures, yeah. would you say? Yeah, it was a real meritocracy. John so Howard he, ruined it, didn't he? Well, I don't know whether he ruined it, but that was just the way it was. Yeah. So, you know, the kids who were the smart asses up the back of the class mm. got to do really good degrees yeah. and learn how to think really clearly. And um, that's why I'm not on my Pat Malone. Mm. You know, there are quite a few. And then once you set the path, all the smart asses up the back of the bus thought, who got the good marks, thought, yeah. oh, you know, I'll do that too. So is that why you're so articulate? Uh, no, I've just been talking an awfully long time. Mm, I talk a lot, no. Uh, I don't know what to say. Um, yeah, I'm just, I just, you're very like well spoken, you know, like you just enunciate very well. Well, that's because I work on the radio. Well, that's true, you but even say. back in the day, like, you know, was it one day just like boom, you're like, what's the cameras no, on? No, no, I had speech and drama classes when I was speech classes. My sons at school, yeah. And we had to, yeah. And, I, and my my best piece in the competitions, mm. me and Kylie Minogue, different categories, all went through. There were heap, people that used to do speech and drama competitions. You were in the thing with Kylie Minogue? Well, I wasn't in with her, but she was in the same program. I think it was like the Morty Alica Stedford. But she used to do tap dance and song and shit. And I did um, drama, comedy, and improvise impromptu reading it was called and impromptu readings hilarious because they used to give you a book and you and you'd get you just to read scan it. it for a minute and then you'd have to read it and then they'd judge you what that's so, so like we weird. were like eight nine ten yeah eleven huh. yeah. just reading a book well it was the, they'd give you the bible or something really oh, okay. complicated it's indoctrination that's what it is kind of so you're a bit of a slashy you know you've done a bit of bit of everything no. Multi, multi-talented. Um, you know, you've done. Well, I so was the first prototype of Waleed. Oh, really? Came out as a girl. Yeah. Well. Um, and the wrong. How did? So you. That's not, probably not very. Were good. you the only woman with like a, like a show, like hosting your own show? Yeah. Yeah. How how did you slip that past them? Like it's pretty. Sydney. Sydney. Yeah. I rest my case. Yeah, in Sydney. He's trying to say this. So Sydney's I was in better. Melbourne on Live and Sweaty. Yeah. Well, what happened was, Rose, is that there was this whole like comedy thing that was going on in Melbourne around the radio stations. Mm. So I'm just trying to work out when it was. So like a Tony I was Martin or something back then? No, in? it was before Tony Martin. It was Richard Stubbs. Okay. So he was the first comedian who was given their own breakfast show. Now so it's all comedians. Exactly. You guys have this Stubbsy. kind of career path. We yeah. didn't have career paths and I didn't hmm. even know. I don't I was, know if I've got a career path. Well, <laughs> at least you can see where they've been. Yeah. Like the comedians these days, they're young and they go through raw comedy or mm. they do whatever and they and they, they can see, right, breakfast radio show, that's where I'm going. So yeah. they'll start on the weekend yeah. and then they'll do that and then they'll get their TV series or whatever. Well, I don't even know when all of this happened. But I think it was because I grew up in Melbourne listening to the Kudda Beans and all of their comedy phone calls mm. that they still do. And it was all about football, right? Yeah. But as a girl growing up in the 70s and 80s in Melbourne, you couldn't play football. As you couldn't be involved in football. But football was I the ruling. I played football. See? Well, no. I, play, I, was, I was a baby feminist and I played football in grade four and five, even though I hated it because there was no other girls on the football team. 
You must have loved it. No, I got bullied a lot, but I was just very stubborn. I so got dacked at an inter-school football game once. Ooh. I know. So what do you think is better, getting decked or getting a wedgie? Mm, wedgie. Wedgie. Yeah. Because nothing gets shown. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's like you've also been there before. Well, I couldn't play football. When I looked at all the important people in town, they were all footballers, and the women with them mm. went to the Brownlow. Yeah. And there was no way I was going to be one of those no. girls that went to the Brownlow. And so I made up this co comedy character, Elle McFeast, that fitted in with Richard Stubbs had his brother Grubby on the XY Zoo, and Elle McFeast went on Grubby's Saturday morning football show with Trevor Marmalade oh. called Kick to Kick. Oh, yeah. And they all had fake names, so I made up Elle McFeast because yeah. it was the 90s, I think, and Elle McPherson was on the front cover of Sports Illustrated, and yeah. I'd stop on the way home. And, eat and you did McDonald's. voiceovers for Sports Girl? Yeah. And they told you to s sound like Elle McPherson? Yeah, and I said, and is that where it came from? Hungry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I sound really hungry and Because I was in this comedy band called The Hot Bagels at that yeah. stage. It was all happening, late 80s. That's I know, crazy. it sounds like I had a lot of fingers in a lot of pies, I but d mm. I've always had a, you know, wanted to do You've got to do lots of things. But You've you interviewed, um, what was it like meeting Julia Gillard? Uh, sh I was imp always impressed with Julia Gillard. Mm. Yeah. She held herself with poise. Well, she also told women it was all right to wear glasses on television. Oh. Have you noticed they all wear her glasses now? Virginia Trioli. No. No uh, one's it. Oh, yeah. no, people say it's annoying because it reflects off the... See? It's a real big... It's, it's so cute to see you here doing this. Oh. I'm so happy. Oh, thank you. That's so nice. Mm. Mm. That's good. So when they threw me in, you don't want to go through the whole palaver of ins and outs or whatever, but I was only 24, 25 when I, I... How old was I when I took over hosting Love and Sweetie? I don't know, but maybe 25 or 26, maybe I was, 28? I don't know. Anyway, I moved to Sydney to do it. But that was because they were looking, initially they were looking for a sports reporter in Melbourne for this Sydney-based mm. show that they'd made up a comedy show about sport and they'd made it up for HG and Roy, right? Yeah. But HG and Roy decided they didn't want to do it at the last minute. And that's when you swooped No, in. Andrew, Andrew. They gave it to Andrew ah. Denton. And then they needed a, because he was rugby league, they needed AFL. <laughs> AFL and I was, lady. And that that's was me. where you come in, yeah. the Melbourne girl. The Melbourne girl. All right. Well, who, what that's football? That's a long story. I know, it? but it's interesting. It's part of our, what football team do you go for? I barracked for Collingwood. Oh, barracked. Yeah. Just well, that's like being a lapsed Catholic. Oh, okay. Um, I go for Richmond. So. I barrack for Richmond now too. Oh, okay. Good. Why did you choose them? Um, cause we don't, I, well, I like we, them. Well, they're just a, there's just something charming about them. My uncle buried for Richmond. We can't talk about football. Why am I talking I about like football? Talking I had an hour football. show to talk about whatever I like, and I've got Libby Gore here. I'm talking about sh football. Well, anyway. It's, it's actually talking about women doing things in male-dominated exactly. industries. That's what you're trying to get well, to. That's what I'm doing. I'm on a Tonight Show. They let a woman on a Tonight Show. Um, and you like to talk about relationships. Yes, I do. And dating. Like We don't have... They're like... <laughs> I'm like... So it all started, um, yeah, I do, but um, we'll have to save it for another time because we've run out of time. Never mind. Thank you so much for coming on. My um, pleasure. People can catch you on 774 yes, on they Sundays. Can. And they can also catch me on 730. Yeah. And any other, like Twitter or anything like that you want to plug? I think you just look for Libby Gore. Yeah, well, obviously. All right. Thank you so much, Libby. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for having me. On. And we will be right back with more after the break. Girls got it. Take this loving and you put it in your pocket. So who's gonna ride with me? This jam's 110 degrees. Cause all the boys want it and all the girls got it. Take this loving and you put it in your pocket.